What's up, YouTube? My Cowboys family bringing you guys another update on the Cowboys training camp practice today. Give us just a second as we get set up. What's up, everyone? A lot of news today to catch up on. After we check the sound, make sure everything works fine. It shouldn't be a problem. So what's up, uh, Cowboys, Cowboys fans and compadres? Dano, Hi, Dano. How are you up? doing today? We're going to kick this off in a minute or so. Yep, just to give you guys is. another extra minute. Uh, As you can see by the description, there's a couple different things we're going to be discussing today. A lot of things. So we got lots of Cowboys news for you guys. Actually, right. the last second we have news here. Let's just go ahead and get started. All right, sounds so. good. So, guys, listen, we're gonna we're gonna start off with um, injury news as always. All yeah, right. So, and surprisingly, not cowboy injury news this time. So, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. injured his ankle. Yeah. Uh, they originally said it was a sprained ankle, and it yeah. sounds like it is still a sprained ankle. Um, yeah. They are expecting him to be kind of day to day, and he's very positive about the injury, so he doesn't expect to be out too long. Yeah. Um, Brandon Marshall as yeah. well. Brandon Marshall as well got uh, injured last night. He hurt his shoulder, and the extent wasn't known. People were worried that it was going to be uh, uh, for a longer time frame or at least more serious than uh, Odell. Um, ended up coming back as well. It was, it was a minor injury, which is fantastic. Actually, you know, we were talking about this mm -hmm. yesterday, that we want the Giants to come in as healthy as possible to playing us. We want, we want, we want to make sure that, that we can beat this team Without, without any excuses. Exactly. We don't want to hear them say that the only reason that they beat us is because, or that we beat them, is because, you know, they were missing OBJ or whoever. So. What's up, and DC what's for up, Life? What's up, DC for Life? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, the, that whole, the whole pair of injuries for the Giants receivers uh, last night, you know, they weren't anything major. Uh, you know, they're probably going to be hampered by their injuries into the, into the week one matchup uh, at Dallas to, to kick off the season mm -hmm. uh, Sunday night. So, you know. That's going to be that. That'll probably will be making a. It will slow them down a little bit. But don't let it fool you guys. They'll be ready when the G Giants come into Dallas. They're going to be ready for us. And you know we have to make sure that we are prepared to, to right. pretend at, at least take it for serious that they're going to be full strength, even if they're not really maybe they're ninety percent. But maybe you know if they're in the game, they're healthy enough so to play. So no exactly excuses. healthy versus healthy, a hundred percent, no excuses. We don't want to hear anything. On either side, hopefully, because, again, you have to be realistic, you yeah. know, that, oh, you beat us because we were X, Y, Z. No, forget it. That's, That's it. Right. Leave it on the field. You win some, you lose some, but we're going to win this one. And I'm very confident about that, again, because of the way that we've been playing. And, you know, we will be updating you more on the Giants, the injuries, and how that might affect them week one. Uh, as we get a little bit closer uh, the week before, we'll be releasing our NFC East kind of update videos. Yeah. But our Giants one will probably be the most in-depth one just because we are going to be facing them week one. So definitely stay tuned, and we will keep you guys updated on any other major injury news or, you know, major news involving the NFC East. Yeah, for sure. Or any of our, uh, of yeah. our major opponents or NFL, you know, players, any big guys get injured. But, uh, you know, again, we don't want any injuries. We want to make sure that we exactly. get these teams, so. all of them. But the Giants especially, there's no excuses, you know, and – yeah, you know, Zeke or no Zeke, there's no excuses on our side. Exactly, either. and we saw our offense play without Zeke. We saw how great, you know, they are, how great they can be. So again, like, just preseason. Yeah, but, but no excuses. Yeah, I know. So. I, I do think that <laughs> this first game, the momentum has switched. It, it was on our side to start the season mm -hmm. with, a, you know, this NFC champs and, you know, it's still looking good. Then the Zeke suspension. The suspension kind of gave, gave a lot of momentum to the Giants and all the people that are, were backing their – you know, them as being the NFC East champs this year. And then, you know, now this, with the two injuries to their receivers, it kind of drops them back. Now everyone's saying, oh, you know, now the Cowboys kind of on the, for on the forefront of the NFC East. And I, I hope the Cowboys are not getting, like, a overly confident because mm -hmm. Zeke or no Zeke, you know, uh, if we have our, our left guard position, you know, solidified yet or not, yeah. you know, no excuses. we got to be ready to, to play the Giants and beat the Giants in Dallas. You know, on that yeah. on that opening Sunday night weekend, and you know, there's no excuses on our side 
And again, I don't want to hear any Giants excuses about their players, especially yeah. if they're both going to be playing. <laughs> and guys. So, hi, Carmen. How you doing? Frankie, thanks for joining yes, us again. Uh, DC4L, absolutely agree. Honestly, the more I see the Giants play, the more I feel the fear from the Giants fans. I know it's only preseason. I'm keeping all of that in consideration, but I know if the Cowboys look like that on the field, I would be very I mean, concerned. I would be freaking out. Definitely their offensive lines looked weak. And their running game was non-existent. I mean, again, against the Browns, you know, who are upstart, you know, they seem to be playing well last night. But, you know, again, I would be a little concerned if I was just a Giants – forget the injuries. Just as a Giants fan of the, exactly. the offense. Exactly, just in general. And the fact that – look, guys, they, they are trying new things, and they're going to be, you know uh, – it's good. they're not going to look perfect out there. But, you know, it would be interesting to see how the, all these teams play week three when it's more of a dress rehearsal kind of yeah. thing. And we're playing Oakland. You know, no joke Oakland. You know, they're going <laughs> to they're gonna be tough. So – just, you know, and it's a good to have a good, tough matchup like this in preseason on right. an important week when it really counts. You know? Exactly. So, so that's an interesting. It's going to be a, a fun this weekend with Oakland. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot of things. But speaking of Zeke, let me roll over to that. Zeke, today, yeah. there was some photos released uh, from the Cowboys' mm -hmm. day off. He's been a very naughty boy. Again, yeah. Again, now listen. Here's the thing, guys. We he know, didn't really do anything, yeah, but. He didn't do anything. He, he's, you know, he's on a boat, maybe drinking alcohol. We don't know. Everything legal that yeah. we can tell. You know, with a bunch of women on there. But the thing is, and again, again, TMZ released this earlier today. It just, yeah. you know, nothing came of it really in the media. Yeah, Very and, little. and it didn't, you know, it didn't definitely didn't look scandalous. It wasn't anything crazy. But again, you know, to the right, per you know, or to the wrong person, I should say, it definitely could look like, oh, there he is, you know, partying with a bunch of scantily clad women again, you know, putting himself in a dangerous situation again. And as a cowboy fan, I can't feel but. <laughs> You know to agree i mean he had one day off and he chose to spend it you know out partying and i get it he's a free guy he can do whatever he wants but i think he does have to consider the way that it looks and reflects on him especially with the upcoming hearing and like that's that, the key number that's the one, key the fact that if there's you value that you have to keep that in mind whatever it is like just stay home okay <laughs> you have like a month where you just have to stay home if you can't do that you need professional help yeah i mean that's the thing i mean look he Oh, I need to, they had one day off. I know he wants to relax. Look, any normal, typical football kid right yeah. now in the NFL, no matter how young or immature, of course they should go ahead and have fun if they want. But when you're Ezekiel Elliott, the best player in the league, the, you know, the one that has a target on, on his yeah, back. Yeah, and you have every spotlight on you. Yeah, and you can't just – you really can't do that right now. Like after the hearing and after the appeal and then, yeah, as things cool down, then go have your fun at the end of the season, you know, at this point. You know, but, but have fun. Make it hurry. You're not doing anything stupid. And, and don't put yourself out there, you know. And again, he's doing the opposite of that. And I don't know. If, I just hope that doesn't affect him in the hearing. I hope it doesn't help, you know, yeah. hurt him on his appeal or his injunction. And again, he's if he gets it in the end, really in the end, what can we say? I mean, yeah. can we say that you know he he, he kind of put it on himself here on the end, you know, like like right now, try to do everything you can to avoid this, and you're putting yourself there now. Again, he's he is a 22 or whatever year old kid, 23 year old kid. I mean, listen, I understand that too, but just. When you're the when you're the bulls exactly. on your back, just someone chill. has to tell them to stop yeah. and chill out. So just saying. Either way, um, hi Kurt, <laughs> how you doing? Yes. Yes, Kurt, how you doing? That's right. Hopefully, we do lucky number six. Yes. So hopefully, is 2017 is the year. <laughs> and yes, I agree with Frank. Yeah, I do agree, definitely with the Browns. We would have blown them out. <laughs> yeah. So and, and then true. DC4L, I agree. You know, it, we have so much depth uh, gonna, again, just on our receivers alone. Like we said earlier, who? How do you stop every single one? How yeah. do you stop Witten and Dez and Beasley and De and you know and Zeke when he's playing or McFadden you know, and Williams Dak. and Bryce? I mean, Dak know, alone Switzer can you know run, that. you know r run the ball We're himself or hand off the ball or pass. The, I mean. We just have a very yeah. dynamic uh, offense. Yeah, so and, and our offense, it goes deep, it gets deep. It goes deep now. Maybe, you know, in different positions we're deeper, but mm -hmm. it's a good thing to have the depth that the Cowboys do have. Cowboy, Dallas Cowboys for life. I'm starting to think the NFL hired TMC to follow him because mm -hmm. they screwed up on the suspension. Want people to think he's out of control. I, mean, I Honestly, I wouldn't put it past them just because at the end them. of the day, you know. But, but at the same time, you know, it is Dallas. It is the Cowboys. They pretty much are, you know, some Hollywood elite, you know, in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th that's it, you know. Eat, breathe, sleep, football. So, you yeah. know, and not just that, but on top of the fact that he is, you know, going through this whole suspension issue, I mean, he's in the spotlight even more than ever, if not more so than he already was before playing on America's team, America's biggest football team, as the number one running back. It, it just, yeah, I mean, you know, he, Zeke has a big spotlight yeah. and a big target on his back, and I think he just needs to behave like, be more aware of that. 
be more weary. And again, and I want to see the teammates kind of come. And you can't, you can't be around them 24-7, yeah. but at least they should come out and maybe do a little more to like keep them in their circle away from any kind of any kind of any, anything, especially right yeah. now. Especially right now. But uh, let me say hi to, you know, of course, Frankie G's there. Yeah, said, Dallas Cowboys football news. Thanks for joining up? us. Sixers, and, JT. And again, we're not saying what's it's going to affect anything. We're just saying that for certain people, it definitely can look bad. You know, there's nothing in there that looked – no, he didn't, he was he was listen, I, I want to reiterate that he yeah. he didn't do anything wrong at all in this whole yeah. thing. We don't. There's nothing that he did wrong. It just it's it's just the, it just puts it in the wrong mindset for the people handling the appeal. It just gives them another weapon against you know to use against the exactly. Z they already in the, in, the, said, in the public opinion space. Yeah, I mean things, they already you know? said they had enough evidence to that. somehow justify the six game suspension. It, you know, we definitely don't want to give them any more ammunition to think that whatever <laughs> original conclusion they had you was see what correct. He said? I, I, then Dallas Cowboys football news. I don't expect them to be at home wearing a robe and reading a book. Okay, you know what? You're he right. should be. No, no, he should be. He I should agree be with home him. studying playbooks. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I, I agree that. Just kidding. I agree with both of you, but that's the thing is that, like, I don't expect them to be at home. Yeah. He's reading a book and wearing but a robe. But maybe for the next month, maybe he should be home reading a book because for the next, you know, two, one, two, three weeks, however long this appeal process is going to go, he needs to be extra cautious. It's kind of like I don't want to say probation, but <laughs> ah. <laughs> go ahead. I don't want to say it's like probation, but, you know, you do have to have a level of, you know, while all, you know, I'm being extra scrutinized now. I guess that's the point we're trying to make. It is an, an abnormal level of scrutiny on him. So he needs to be on his best behavior. And I think part of that is, unfortunately, making sure that people don't get any kind of wrong impression as far as him and any kind of partying situation that could arise and something like that. So, but at the same time, you know. We'll see. Uh, I mean, he's, you know, he's having fun. He's a young guy. As long as he hopefully doesn't put himself in another situation where another young woman can do something like that or, you know, all yeah, good. Yeah, I, mean, I, I do think that, uh, you know, we'll, we've talked so much about Zeke. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like overly done already to a point where, I mean, you know where we stand on this. You can go back yeah. to our other videos and see <laughs> it. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to – We'll have to go into it and see it, it more next Tuesday when, when this whole thing comes to a head. And we'll see what yeah. the final ruling is going to be from the appeals, you know, head right there, which is what Harold yeah. Henderson or something like that. I don't know. So, and Frankie G, we definitely <coughs> want to see Rico Gathers out there. But he is, unfortunately, still dealing with that concussion protocol. Uh, we yeah. don't expect him back this week at all. Yeah, and we'll jump into that in just a second. Yeah, we can just go into it right now because so. we, we, we did a lot about Z, guys. Yeah, in case so. you're late, Vaughn Glenn, what's up? It's yeah, all right. and Dallas, love you too. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? We're human. <laughs> yeah. It's going to probably fall, fall down, but it's all right, guys. So, hey, listen. Um, <coughs> yeah, you think Z, well, I mean, you think he learned his lesson? Well, I, look, I think he learned his lesson as far as uh, <coughs> type of women to. Oh, yeah. You know, then you see the pictures from today, you know, and then you think about it. You know, he. If one of those women, like I think, you said, I think we law, don't know the context behind well, it. They could have been friends, or he knew them. I don't know. I, I think if you listen to Law Nation, and he said uh, a comment about, uh, you know, like these one of these women can make a claim tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then he's going to be, how's that going to look with the appeals? But now the NFL can do whatever they want. It's not about law with the NFL. It's about it's about image. Well, and, and again, and, but it's also their choice. And right now, the collective bargaining agreement allows for Goodell to just say, okay, you're not guilty, but I think it looked bad. You got six games exactly. for domestic violence because the woman claimed it. And so that's that's where that he has to be smarter and not put himself in a party situation where a woman can claim something happened, and that's the only thing I see that's negative right now is him mm -hmm. not being aware of that, and that's that's what could be a later danger for him. Not not he's gonna be suspended or banned from the league. Yeah, that's too much. But I'm saying like like to win his appeal, it's gonna be an issue if this continues to pop up every time he has a day off. No, I agree. And again, even if he does somehow win this appeal. I don't know how the NFL works, but I don't know if they can consider any part of this incident and any, you know, later incidents that might happen, you know? It just, you know, could they take into this, into consideration this whole incident or, you know, because if they find that, you know, Zeke is right in his appeal and they repeal the six-game suspension, at least for domestic violence, you know, yeah. I, I'm not really sure how it works. But again, if it comes down to what the NFL feels, I mean, feelings are so ambiguous. There's no, you know... If this, then that. It's just, oh, I feel like this. So very but, ambiguous. Again, it's, 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 it's like you said earlier, it's the image they want to portray, and, and yeah. that's what it's going to come down to in the end. I mean, don't expect them to, to get too many games cut off, if any. I'm predicting it'll be four, but I would like to see two. I think if it's two games, they'll work something out. But he could still do an injunction even mm -hmm. if he wins it or doesn't win any games back. He could still do an injunction. Again, guys, August 29th, oh, 28th and the 27th, we'll talk much more about this, the days yeah. leading up to it. Definitely so, more in detail and, about you know, the possibilities. I'm sure things will come out as well, you know, between now and then that's going to be leaked or that, you know, we'll probably hear about. Yeah, so, and I agree with you, Dallas Cowboys Football News and Sixers. 
you know, and hopefully, Glenn, yes, he's hard headed. Glenn is, you know, it, he is immature, and you can see that. I mean, him and Dak are only a few months apart, and you can see the difference in maturity level between both of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> so anyway, you can see the difference in maturity between both of them, and it just, you know, it, it's obviously there. So hopefully Zeke. Definitely learns his lesson. That's why I do. Kind of, I don't want to say I hope he faces so, some so, I mean, suspension, he, well, here, here, but I do here, understand why I, he might. I understand why Dallas Cowboy Football News says that he doesn't deserve anything. Um, I think that he does. Des- I mean, if, if the NFL is going to be as you know as hard as they're trying to show, guess what? I mean, they're going to give him two games. At the very least, you have to look at it that mm-hmm. way. If, they, if you look at it that way, with everything against him and all the evidence. Which is not against him. Yeah. The only evidence is the boob gate thing where he pulled a woman's yeah, shirt down, down on St. Patrick's Day. Patrick's. But that, because it looks bad to the league, Roger Goodell would probably have a, would be, you know, he would be sub- completely secure about if he suspended him for two games for that situation. But yeah. outside of that, six, and they're claiming it was because of domestic violence, and there's no evidence to prove that. That's where the issue lies exactly. for me. So, again, so if they want to suspend him for uh, the personal conduct or making the league look bad or whatever for the woman's top thing, all right, that I understand. But if you're saying that you're suspending him for six games because of domestic violence, that's where we have a problem. I think that's where Zeke also has a problem, and I think that that's the grounds that he's using mainly to, you know, as the basis for his, his appeal. But obviously, guys, like we said, let's move on from this because we kind of gave you guys everything we have, and <laughs> we definitely want to talk more about the Cowboys stuff. I see we have Stronger King. So, yeah, so thank you, Stronger King. Thank Seahawk you, fan. Tobias. How you doing? Glad Can't wait to December. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be a good one, guys. Honestly, yeah. uh, the Seahawks games are some of the most exciting ones. They're, they're intense, man. Defense. Are you guys defense and our yeah. offense going to be intense? And we like to say that Dak uh, resembles uh, Russell Wilson in his younger days. But, you know, those days are past him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, All right, guys. He's going to run less. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about Rico Gathers. Yeah, Rico so Gathers. unfortunately he is still going through concussion, concussion protocol. protocol. They don't expect him back at all this week. Uh, he should be hopefully back next week, but obviously if he's still going through concussion protocol, it means he got I mean, yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard. It, it's one thing to be precautionary with him, and mm-hmm. they wanted to get him a lot of snaps, and now he's, he didn't miss the whole game. He's going to miss probably – it's like a 90% chance, or if not 100% chance, he's going to miss this this game coming up. Exactly. In this game, they were really looking not, forward to seeing Yeah, I just hope it's not too serious. That's yeah. the thing. It's like something like that. Usually concussions, they, you're, you're done with it after a couple of days, but I guess he still must be, must be suffering some of the side effects from the concussion. Yeah, so, so hopefully he just relaxes we'll see what happens and rests with him, yeah. and gets back now I'm gonna, on track. Yeah, I'm going to run through some other guys' injuries here. I mean, th- some players were out today. Of course, Jordan Lewis, who's probably not going to practice this week, his hamstring's keeping him out. Um, Chido Beouzie, he was out again, but it's looking like it's going to be closer for him to come back soon. I think we discussed that yesterday, yeah. but uh, so it, 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 he seems to be getting closer. Definitely keep your eyes for coming back to practice. I would expect sometime tomorrow, hopefully. Well, so, uh, next maybe. couple days, we'll see. But I don't know if he's going to play this game against Oakland. So I, I hope he does get out there. We need these guys getting out there, but they got to be definitely healthy, securely healthy. Yeah. Uh, we also – Keith Smith, our fullback, which, you know, it's more precautionary with him. He might even play against Oakland. Um, we talked about Rico Gathers. He's, he wasn't in practice today. Tyrone Crawford, of course, we all know he's going to be mm-hmm. out. But he is – again, I'm going to repeat it. He's on schedule to be back for week one against the Giants. He'll probably be ready to go, like definitely 100% by then. Yeah. Um, Leon McFadden, who's fighting for a spot as a cornerback, was out today again, second day in a row he was out of practice, so it doesn't look good for him to really yeah. be trying to keep we, that we job. We have a lot of rookies and a lot of guys who are fighting for spots and a lot of guys who are both, like Marquez White, you know, who yeah. are dealing, you know, I know Marquez is out there again, but he was dealing with an injury recently right. that kept him but out, he was out there, really and again, hurts him. Yeah, but then on top of that, he had a, a kind of a subpar game, and while Duke Thomas, number 26, had, had an a amazing game. much better game. He had a blown play, but he definitely had a better game than, than Marquez, I think passed him on the depth chart, mm-hmm. so... But we'll, we'll talk about that on another show, uh, another another day, yeah. you know. But uh, let me see here. Oh, now, here's the thing, guys. The, the big news, I guess, of today's training camp practice, and as far as injuries are concerned, uh, of course, Switzer was out there doing a lot of stuff. It was doing great. You know, all yeah. the guys we talked about yesterday are back out there. Um, but Chaz Green, guys, he was – he kind of uh, – they said first it was an injury, which yeah. it, it actually was – it actually was just that he was cramping up. Some people are making jokes about him because every every two days with this guy, it's another problem. You know how many problems we've had with him last season, the injuries and, and, yeah. and it just every little thing seems to knock this guy out. So, you know, he was playing left guard, splitting time the whole practice with Jonathan Cooper, which right now is looking pretty good for the most part to win that that uh, mm-hmm. left guard position. Um, and again, he he looked good in this last week's game, Jonathan Cooper. So yeah. Chaz Green is going to fall back here again. So yeah. and it just they it, it brings they, back the point that we said that that's one of the main reasons why he wasn't starting 
on the line that even though he has the talent, he just doesn't have the health. He doesn't stay healthy long enough to stay out there. So, you know, in case Tyron Smith gets hurt, okay. But like I said, what Short. happens if Chaz Green gets hurt? There's a well, very likely Chaz chance Chaz Green could be hurt at the – I mean – well, I mean, that's the thing is that if you have if you have uh, Chaz Green yeah. playing guard, then who plays tackle if something happens to Tyron yeah. Smith? So that's why they're trying to try to groom Green because of injury issues to also play mm -hmm. the left tackle behind Tyron Smith. And also, he can play swing; he can play the other side as well yeah. in case Lel Collins has an issue or there's an injury somewhere with him. Mm -hmm. But at least we have a secure guy for a couple of games, hopefully, without getting injured. You know, that could cover Tyron Smith's spot if there's if it need be mm -hmm. with his back and he has issues in the past with injuries like that. He has Vaughn Glenn. I know it's only 17. Yeah. There's 17 watching, which is decent. So, only yep, eight yep. likes, guys. Come on, give us some likes. Actually, yep. Let's <laughs> actually go ahead and scroll back through some of these. Yeah, we're going to catch up on some questions comments now. Comments real quick. So, so let's see. Uh, Eagles versus Seahawks, Battle of the Birds. <laughs> uh, Frankie G, I think our offensive Zeke will destroy the Raiders this week. Dallas Cowboys football news. Rico has never been hit like that. He better get used to it. Uh, That's just a helmet to helmet, guys. Sorry. Can't help that. So, how about them Cowboys, by the way? Sorry we didn't say hi to you earlier, but thank you for joining us. It's all right. Uh, yeah, no, we'll have to go back and check trade. out the stream on that trade. Yes. Yeah, there's a big trade in the NBA. So, Kyrie Irving went to the Celtics. Yes, for, and if you're uh, watching and you haven't liked, why don't you like us? What's wrong? <laughs> What'd we do? I'm just kidding. Uh, but yes, guys, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, make sure to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you get all the notifications when we go live. And 20 Team Fantasy Football League, guys, is a link in the description. Is six spots open. Last I checked, should be a couple more guys jumping in there. And uh, if not, uh, I'm sure we can uh, either cut it down the league if you guys yeah. want, or we can, you know, we can try to see if there's other guys that maybe uh, people we know, yeah, yeah that, that personally we know that might want to join the league. So we're just trying to open it up for you guys, though. So and Frankie G, thoughts on coaches still being sold on Kellen Moore? Uh, the coaches are wrong. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. it just yeah, we're you know we Again, I kind of said earlier that we thought it was you know that there's some reports that it's Linehan who seems to be very in love with Kellen Moore that some of the other coaching staff does yeah. want to let him go. And actually, Cooper Rush. Well, that's the thing about today, guys, yeah. is that Cooper Rush actually again today split time at the as a, as the backup. So now he's not just doing some you know a third of it. Now he's doing half. And and and, and Garrett, Jason Garrett, yeah. uh, head coach Jason Garrett said that today's press conference that he wanted to make sure to see if Cooper Rush would take advantage of his opportunities. Exactly. So I that think was that's, a major thing. And, and again, the him. fact that they're saying opportunity, they're saying the door is open. It's up to Cooper Rush to blow his way through. So that's Cooper right. Rush, show us what you got this upcoming game. And who knows, guys? We might actually be seeing the end of the Kellen Moore Cowboys saga, which might be, no more. you know, we might have to toast to that. So Obviously, we'll keep you guys updated on that, but Cooper Rush did look pretty great out there in practice today. Yeah, I mean, he definitely got, again, he got a lot of, a lot more reps today, and that's a good sign for him playing more and have the coaches have more confidence in him. You know, in him. You know that's, that's the thing that we want to make sure the, the coaches, the coaching staff is sold on him because they're definitely sold on Kellen Moore for whatever reason, and they know he's yeah. a smart guy, but again, they're not, they're not sold, I guess they're not sold yet at Cooper Rush because he's so inexperienced and he's playing against lesser competition right now, third stringers, fourth stringers. You know, so I do agree he needs to be thrown in, into the fire a little more. Hopefully yeah. this week, and definitely against Houston, he's going to play the whole game. So, <laughs> so and Shallow Hal, thanks for joining us. What's and up? Von Glenn, I do agree Cooper Rush is just a guy, but I think he's a guy who's better than Kellen Moore. And that's Correct. honestly right now, if he can be better than Moore, then I am confident and I feel much better with Cooper Rush as our second. No, I'm going to take, take a question here about um, from Frankie G. If we only keep five corners, who do you keep? All right, well, you so, keep Skandrick. Yeah, you Anthony keep, Brown. Anthony Brown. And then they, they do have Nolan, uh, Nolan Carroll. Carroll penciled in right now as a starter. Those three guys are going to be the starters in the nickel. So yeah. right as of right now, of course, Nolan Carroll gone. You have Chidobe Awuzie, mm -hmm. and you have Jordan Lewis. And it's so touchy about those two. But those are, those are the five, the top five, I'd say. And if you put one of those on injured, which you might see, like someone like Jordan Lewis go on the injured list. Yeah, who's still dealing with that hamstring injury. Yeah, um, and, and again, I would say the next guy, it's either Marquez White. Or Duke Thomas, and I say Duke Thomas right now has the inside right now, track on it. I think Duke it. Thomas edges out Marquez White. Like just, we said earlier, yeah, Marquez White still two had weeks to a go. rougher game this past week. Uh, he was coming back from that injury, and he still is kind of eh. But I will say this, though. I think that either guy gets cut out of mm -hmm. those two, if they, if, they keep, if they keep one of them and mm -hmm. cut the other one, I think practice the other guy squad? will be practice. I think he'll get through the practice squad. Either or will. I, yeah. I do think so. Um, let me see here. Strong, stronger King log. Seahawk fan. Mm -hmm. uh, accident away excellent way to happen your team i don't know i mean i know you guys just lost your left tackle i know you got a guys from a, a guy from philly yeah so, so I mean, and, and that a, goes to show you how important it is to make sure that somebody 
behind your main guys, you know, that if you are going to have a backup quarterback, that he can at least, you know, pull the job through, which Kellen Moore has shown that he can't do. But he we can't know carry Kent Moore can't do one it. Game. <clears throat> and he can't yeah, do it. Yeah, for sure. Now, we know right. that. Like, that's a fact, a proven fact. We've seen him out there several yeah. games. He, yeah, and I'm going I'm I'm to say, I'm going to also say, you know, Frankie G said about Nolan Carroll. It's true because actually – Des Bryant torched them a lot in this yesterday's uh, practice. He torched them today in a couple times. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing with Nolan Carroll, though, guys, is that, you know, he seems like a decent tackler. And uh, I'm not really, you know, he he doesn't seem the best coverage guy. And with this, for some reason, again, he's one of those coaches guys where they like him starting yeah. right now. They like him in the starting lineup for whatever the reason is, playing one side. Yeah. And probably Skandrick playing the other. And then on, when they have a nickel, They'll move Skandrick to the slot and put Anthony Brown on the outside. Yeah. Now, that, that's, what they're, that's what they're doing. I'm not saying I agree, but that's I know, what they're doing. I know, but question for you. Do you think that Nolan Carroll is better than Brandon Brintos Carr? Who would you, like, think, who would you feel more it's confident? It's a great comparison. I think they're equal. You think they're equal? Yeah, I mean, I think Brandon Carr was so – he was just so bad in coverage, but he was always there. It's kind of like Nolan Carroll. He's always there. He, you know, he, you know, barring a DUI suspension, but he's always there. He's not really hurt. He's not the best coverage guy. He's not yeah. the – you know, he's a decent tackler, but – you know, uh, Carr kind of did those same things. So I would I would compare him to exactly to Brandon Carr. That's a right. good question. I like so, that. <laughs> so, well, no, it, just because I know that a lot of fans, as much as they were complaining about Brandon Carr for years, were crying as soon as he left the team saying, oh, no, we got rid of Brandon Carr. Oh, my goodness, what are you going to do? I think he was asking for good. way too much money yeah, for the value that. that he brought to the team. I think the Cowboys made the right call. But – if we just ended up signing someone who's going to be the same or possibly worse, who's also dealing with a suspension, you know, yeah, a Cowboy exactly. staff, you know, I don't know, yeah, be I a little agree. smarter than that. And I'm going to say Sixers, Sixers JT, what's up? I know he's an Eagles fan, in case he didn't say it already. But um, I know I know that, that uh, I, I can see what you're saying about wasting time with him. He's one of the people that Chip Kelly brought, brought in, just like, you know, Cedric Thornton, who, by the way, I do want to, you know, I, I just I just wanted to address your question I don't agree that we're wasting our time with him. He looked decent as far as uh, tackling is concerned, but yeah. I, I don't trust his coverage. He's, a, he's to me, he's a Brandon Carr. If you guys know Brandon Carr, you'd see why we we compare him to him. Yeah. Now, um, I want to go to do uh, about what's his name, um, Thornton from the oh, Eagles, the former right. Eagle yeah, guy, Cedric Thornton. Cedric Thornton, so. you know, number ninety-two. Today, he actually took over for Stephen Paya. Um, you know, he's, he was a star last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, and one of the main guys in the, in the front there to stop the run and. Right now, he's looking like the third guy on the on the defensive front. With Malik yeah. Collins, Stephen Paya, and then he's he's going to be coming in as a backup or a rotational player. Yeah. But Cedric Thornton. Well, yeah, yeah, we're talking about the inside yeah. guys right now because like David Irvin would be the other guy when he comes back on okay. the inside to replay, you know, to come in for Paya and for Collins. Um, and we also have another guy or two that can go in, like Trevon Crawford can also be one of those guys okay. too. But what I'm, I'm just trying to say with the work, guys we're working with right here, um, I think that. I think that with Paya today, see, the thing is, guys, Paya, a little bit of a knee issue last week. He did play the game. He looked really good, I thought, in his last game against the Colts. He was disruptive. Um, <coughs> but he was out of practice today because he had a sore knee. Now, he was he was in practice. He, he was probably doing some lighter stuff, but he didn't get into, into the compete period or the team drills. Um, so Cedric Thornton was playing in that spot for him today mm -hmm. at the nose tackle. So probably they were doing – when the nose tackle, that means we were in a 3-4 kind of line, lineup. But I think we were in our nickel. And when you do a nickel, usually David Irving is in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I guess I wanted to run with what we're going to have week one, which right now, without Stephen Paya, which he would, he would usually run that spot, you know, or David Irving would be there, but he's not there. He's actually yeah. the guy they want to use in that spot. Um, but Cedric Thornton right now is being used. He's kind of like the third third stringer in that mm -hmm. spot. He was playing it right now because, I, because Paya was gone today for most of the practice as far as those uh, – those compete and drill periods were con yeah. concerned. So, and, and, and again, Sixers, I, I understand you feel like Cedric Thornton was one of the good things. Obviously, you know, our team is benefiting from he him. He was okay last season. Is, he was just okay, He's still just okay. Yeah. So, He didn't you know. seem to be above level, like a, 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 a above average player, which was what he's getting paid to be. So, and you know, Tyron Crawford, I think Crawford from our side, we drafted him. I think he's also a similar type of player to that. Yeah. That just he's okay. He was looking like a, he was having a great camp until he got hurt. And we probably won't see him until week one, but we'll, you know we'll, we shall see. I guess he's one of these question marks that you know he's going to definitely make the team. He's going to be out there yeah. against the Giants. We just don't know how much and, and how often. So it depends on the rotation by by Marinelli. Um, let me see. Let's see a couple more here. Uh, so Frankie we, G, what running back do we get rid of, and how do you order them on the depth chart? So um, I think we've said it before, and I guess well, who, who's this? Frankie G, what running back do we get rid of, and how do you oh. order them on the depth chart? So, 
Zeke. Yeah, so obviously <laughs> Zeke's number one. Um, but let's just pretend, you know, obviously he's suspended. He'll be on the suspended list. If he's on a special li- suspended list now, yeah. you know, you can keep an extra running back. Exactly. So, so he has Zeke. I mean, I'd say number two is McFadden. Mc- Darren McFadden, you run DMC. So, number three in rank now, not necessarily we keep him or not, but rank I'd say Alfred Morris. Yes. And so he'd be a close, close guy to McFadden. I personally think that we should trade him. And that's I, and that's what that's what I'm saying. And then we have another guy, which is I would say Rod, Rod Smith. Smith. And then the last guy, Ronnie Hillman. So who I don't think is gonna make the team. So if you if you're gonna keep four with Zeke on a suspension list, then you can keep all four and cut Hillman. No problem. You keep Morris, you don't yeah. trade him. But then when you get Zeke back on the roster, things can change in the first two weeks or three yeah. weeks or six weeks, you know. So we'll see. But then, do you who do you cut if you have to cut somebody? And that would be a, uh, I would say we have too many of the same out there mm-hmm. with with Alfred Morris out there, yeah. and that's a thing. And again, you never. What if McFadden gets injured? Then we've made our decision for us. So Morris will be the main guy. Yeah. So and again, I feel good with him back there as well. He's not as big, but we have Rod Smith that can lighten that part of it. So exactly. So and again, you that's know, that's kind Rod of the mix we got to think about. The, yeah. Working it in that way, but you know, Rod Smith and Hillman just hasn't been out there enough. I think he's decent talent. Yeah. He's so more Lance, just for, Lance for whatever reason, he just wasn't really able to shine on our team. I'm sure he will either make our practice squad or make someone else's team a little bit better. And. And Sixers, uh, yeah, Claiborne, yeah, he went, Claiborne, he went to the Jets. Yeah, and Carl um, went to the Ravens. So how about them Cowboys? I think we just answered that. We do think that Morris should be the one that's traded. I think that McFadden uh, is definitely the better running back of the two, and I think he Not by much, and again, again, better. guys, you know, McFadden's been injured. I do think that, I mean, he, he's just bigger. He's a bigger back, and, you know, he can do – he's kind of more dynamic than Morris is. Morris is more of a smaller, quicker back, which is good. We need something like that, too. But again, I think Zeke is a combination of both of those guys, yeah. and and Rod Moore, you know, Rod Smith is more of a, a power back, but he's you can see how, how he played even if it's against uh, third stringers, mm-hmm. he played with some energy. I mean, that guy can run over people, and that, you can you, you know those are still people out there playing. So it's not like yeah. it's just uh, you know he's playing against just little kids or anything. You know, he's playing against NFL players out there trying to make teams. Exactly. So um, let's see, uh, trade Morris, save one point five <laughs> on the cap. I agree. Really like That's Rod Smith. He'll never trade McFadden. Arkansas ties. Morris has more trade value. Darren McFadden is old and washed up. Again, so, guys, remember, he's going to play for a short time. And, he, and again, two years ago, he was doing pretty good. He had a whole year off. <laughs> he hasn't done it. He didn't hardly get hit last exactly. season. Exactly. So think how healthy he is now. <laughs> yeah. And about TJ Yeldon, I mean, that would be interesting because he's a, he's a, he'd be a decent running back. He's a, you know, from the Jaguars, if, uh, if I'm correct there. Um, it would be interesting to see it. But again, do we need someone like that? Is there time to, to get someone into our system with the with the fact that we're still fi- trying to find out our own four or five running back, you know, four running backs system there, who, who we're going to keep and who we're yeah. going to cut, and then throw another guy in the mix in the middle of the preseason? It's going to be tough to throw someone in the middle like that. Well, we'll see. And, guys, I do want to talk about McCown. I, want, so, I always mean to mention that. Well, McCown, yeah, Luke Frankie, McCown is yeah. – uh, yeah, he's. I see Frankie G. What did he say? Yeah. Um, if we keep three quarterbacks, do you get rid of Moore or McCown? And, again, guys, right now McCown hasn't shown enough. Yeah, he's had so like, it's like a hard quarter to say. left. But he was injured last week, and we had discussed this mm-hmm. yesterday. He was back in pads. He was working with the third team now. So take it as you, as you want. I mean, it was Moore and uh, Cooper Rush playing on the second team, taking turns. And then you had only one guy in the third team, which was Luke McCown. Now, yeah. he's obviously the third guy, but will it be will, will the last game be something more of a Luke McCown more battle in the sense of as if the coaches are looking to see if Cooper Rush can, of course, do well and then see if McCown has anything left in the tank? That would prove worthy of keeping him and cutting more, so it, it'll be interesting. But again, guys, nobody's gonna pick up Luke McCown, and I don't know. I don't. He, he doesn't have any of our practice squad eligibility. Yeah. Uh, so. But more does, and someone will probably pick him up. One of the lesser teams in the in the, in the NFL. Yeah. So, so as long as the Giants don't get him. How you doing? Thanks for joining us. Hi, Hollyway. So another but, Eagles fan. But yeah, I mean personally, I don't think McCown is gonna make the team, and I, you know, if we do keep three quarterbacks, it's gonna be. You know, Dak, Moore, and Rush. So it seems Probably, like McCown yeah. is just kind of a camp well, body. Let's see, but what, yeah, you let's never see what he does in the last, he last two do. games. You'll see, yeah, but he, so. he won't bypass more. The coaches love him too much. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. I'll see here. I see Tobias. What's up from Argentina again? Morris will get our sixth rounder. I, I think I heard a foul, fifth rounder is what the Cowboys were hoping to get. So, I mean, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. <laughs> what is this here? Marco kept looking for you. <laughs> Marco. Yeah, I know. For me, what do you uh, – for who? Uh, looking for – for oh, Hollywood. For Holly, yeah, because the Eagle fans. He's always <laughs> – he's always looking for the Eagle trolls, but, you know. 
No, Hollyway, you're not a troll. Well, we'll see how about them Cowboys. I'll see if McCown was – he said McCown was injured, and I think he came back and beat more. Well, we'll see. It'll be interesting. But, again, in a way, I almost – I mean, we need a veteran quarterback back there, and that's what McCown can do, but is he that good? I mean, he can't be worse than Moore, you know, as far as it seems to me. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm going to go talk about another guy that's kind of not been talked about too much. He kind of disappeared. You guys remember number 81, Andy Jones? He was. Kind of, don't. He, <laughs> you don't. Exactly. He was competing. He was competing in second training camp at the Cowboys. He was competing against um, Noah Brown, number 85, which I think is going to make this team. Um, Noah Brown has been doing fantastic the last baby two Dez. weeks. Yeah, <laughs> baby does. He's doing fantastic the last two weeks. And Andy Jones had a bad game last week and this past week, and, you know, like two weeks ago against the Rams. And, mm -hmm. and then he, he, you know, he had an average or below average game. Last week he was not even in the game. He was injured. You know, again, we, we hate to not see the competition get more heated and more yeah. better, you know, get closer. But this is kind of Injury how situations, the roster guys. ends up getting cut in the first place. So if you're not healthy enough to show the coaches what you got, you're not going to stay on the team. And, so and Noah Brown Andy, has definitely got the edge on him. Yeah, Andy Jones is falling behind. I think he's been back now. But he's – actually, no, I'm sorry. He was out of practice today. Mm -hmm. So, again, he's still out of practice. He missed the game. Obviously, he must be serious enough. I mean, maybe we could put him as kind of injury list. That's another option, but I got so many injured guys we could put on this list to open up another spot. So, and and keep these guys on the team, which you know the coaches will work their magic with that. So you can yeah. at least trust them on that. So, and Von Glenn, I would normally agree with you, but the problem is that I think there's too many teams that need quarterbacks in a very desperate way. Yeah, and Cooper and Rush look, is so. If there, yeah, there's he's guys a big out talk there right willing now. to take Colin Kaepernick. If the Dolphins sign Jay Cutler, somebody will sign Cooper Rush. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. You know, somebody <laughs> will sign Kellen Moore. If we let go of Moore, I suspect somebody, somebody will, will somebody pick him up because they're that desperate. So yeah, for sure. just my opinion. But, you know, obviously we'll see as uh, things keep going. Yeah, so. for sure. I mean, we'll, well, that's going to be seen often. Guys, I wanted to – let me see. I think we're kind of done with the injuries, so to speak. Um, I think we touched on everything. Now, I did want to mention today Taco. Taco played very well that's today. Right. Um, he was playing – you know, he must have shown a lot to the, to the coaches – um, because he actually they, had some first team reps, right? Yep, and that was the key today. He had some first team reps against, you know, on, on our first team, but against first teamers like Tyron Smith, like you know Zach Thomas, Zach Martin, uh, Lael Collins, and the whole offensive line. You know, the mm -hmm. whole line that was in there, Frederick, whatever. You know, I know he plays on the outside, but that's what I'm saying. Rico was in. I mean, uh, I mean not Rico, but uh, Taco was got, was playing fantastic today. He was, you know, getting some reps in with the first team. And it really shows that they, the coaches are finding more, are having more confidence in him yeah. to to be out there more of a, of a routine play, a rotational. But but more often, maybe than even we mm -hmm. thought in the beginning. So yeah, so. I mean, he That's definitely, a good sign. yeah, he definitely is looking much much better, and it's good to see him finally get to the point where he can have some reps with the first team and hold his own. So yeah, yeah. I, I, for sure. I mean, we'll have to definitely continue to wait and see and see what what comes out of that. But I mean, do you have any other? Thoughts on that? I mean, not really. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, let's see real quick here. Uh, getting fifth-round pick for Tobin is crazy. It showed the Seahawks. Oh, that's, 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 that's the Orlando. Eagles and so, uh, Cooper Seattle. Rush is a rookie, not a backup. No one will pick him up. Again, you never know. I, I just think that there's a lot of teams out there that are very desperate for some quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, uh, someone will want more. Look at how he performed. And, and exactly how about them Cowboys? Even though it's subpar, you know, somebody is willing to take that over a complete – Garbage, even though I think he's complete. <laughs> now, listen, guys. Jalen Smith had practice today. Another big game. Another big day for him. I mean, he was producing. He was he was stopping uh, McFadden. He was playing against the. the uh, I think it was against the. Uh, he was playing on the first team defense. I think I'm not sure. Yeah. They had him on and off the first team defense, but I know he played against the. Uh, I think the second team offense, and you know he was stopping them, and he was you know stopping McFadden, and he was doing very well. So. Another good day from him. Another great day. Great day from Dak and especially uh, Dez. I mean, Dez, right. Dez is doing another – another. he's just – every day he's just showing that he's, he's one, he could be one of the best receivers in the league this season. And exactly. it's, really, it's really good to see him out there looking so healthy, so confident, and so, I don't know, on, on his game for yeah. the first time in really a long time. And, and not just that, but to see uh, – you know, there's been reports saying that, you know, Dak is really bonding with Dez, that they're growing a lot closer. Yeah. And not just Dak with Dez, but Dak with Beasley. Right. And last year – him and Beasley grew very, very That's close. True. That they're growing even closer this year. That you know, it just that that synchronicity is there, you know, and yeah. they all seem to just be 
gelling. Like, I, yeah. I just, I don't know. I just, I, I can use a lot of words. It's just the first word that popped in my head. But whatever it is that's going on there, that little bromance, whatever it is, it's going in their favor. Yeah. It's, you know, you can see I, it in the way they're playing, the way that they are with each other, the, the fact yeah, that it continues to grow. That's the thing that they've been talking about. And that's the thing when they interviewed Dak today. And that's another thing I want to discuss was, you know, one of the main things when we wanted to discuss was the fact that the, the Dak – is looking so confident. He's leaner, he's stronger, he's smarter, and, and he's learning all the play, the entire playbook even better, and, and learning how to play the, the opponents better. With all those th- all those things in mind, think uh, add in there the fact that the chemistry he's having with with Dak with uh, Dez is so much better than he had last year. He had no real chance to work that with the injury to, to Dez, and then you know with the limited time Dak had to, to get thrown into the into the fire right away exactly. into the starting lineup. So when you think about it, guys. They, they really had a whole season now, and now off season, and now training camp to really get in sync with each other. Yeah. And it's working. So it's working. Dak fantastic. Wear, Dak wears experience well. It, yeah. it, it suits yeah. him. He He's mature. Looks, he can handle you know, it. Ready for it. Yeah. Made for it. Cowboy fans right now are loving this because honestly, guys, we feel it. We all feel this. That that, that Dak is definitely. Ring number six is in the air. <laughs> <laughs> we smell it. But maybe I don't know if it's this year, or next year, but it's yeah, it's coming it, exactly. with this with this squad. I, I have a good feeling and. And with Dak, yeah, and Dak leading us, I, he has the the, the, the credentials, and, the, and you can just see it to be a leader and to lead us to mm-hmm. to the sixth or seventh or eighth Super Bowl trophy and ring. Now, I will say that <clears throat> the connection he has and the chemistry he's having with Beasley last season, as you mentioned, fantastic. As we knew, he, that was his favorite receiver last year. He's even saying it's much improved this season. So again, another year to really work with the, with these guys, another year to really get to know their speed and the way they cut and the way they do their routes. I'm telling you guys, I was watching him throw it to Beasley, throwing it to Williams, throwing it to to, uh, to, to Dez Bryant. I mean, Dak looks like a man on a mission. I mean, he looks like a robot out there throwing his passes, like like just lasering them in, in perfect position. He could throw it deep. He could throw it short. Mm-hmm. Fantastic, guys. He's really baffling the scouts and the people that watch them, the way yeah. he's playing now, he's, the way he's maturing and the way he's learning and the way he really wants to be number one. And, you know, that's the, that's the how thing. are you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. What's up, man? I love so, your quick video. shout out to every single one of you guys who's watching right now. Thank you so much for joining us and getting the latest Cowboys news with us here. You know, thanks for joining the family. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to say hi. Uh, actually, do you mind? Let's catch up on a few Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go. So, uh, I think I saw somebody mention the draft. Give me just a second. Let me see. Talking trash. When is the fantasy draft again? September second, around nine or ten. Uh, we will East have Coast more. Time, yeah. yeah, we'll have more exact details uh, this upcoming weekend, guys. So just stay tuned. Uh, we'll definitely keep you guys in the loop. If you haven't already joined, uh, make sure to check out the link in the description down below. We are having a twenty-person fantasy football league just for fun. Um, <laughs> you know, we're gonna be doing some trash talking there. Yeah. Uh, you know, more adult. <laughs> language things like that but it is just for fun guys so any experience level is welcome you know we're just here to have a good time i mean there's 20 teams we've never done a league like that before so we're yeah. really excited to, to be able too. to play with you guys and just have a good time and you know draft z <laughs> <laughs> now here's the thing guys uh, a question I, I saw today in some in some uh like on, on, on cowboys uh news sites and stuff who's gonna be who do you think would be our, our defensive backfield our, our five guys for week one, and I'm talking about five, our four starters, and then our fifth guy for the say the nickel defense. And what what I heard, and I kind of agree with this, is Anthony Brown, number thirty, is going to be out there with Skandrick on the other side at corner. <laughs> That's going to be so interesting. Oh, no. oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, Anthony Brown on one side, Skandrick on the other, um, with Jones and Heath playing safety. On, I, I think when you and I think I, did, I mentioned this earlier, when you bring in the nickel package, you're going to have you're going to probably move Skandrick. You'll definitely move Skandrick to the slot. Because remember, guys, we don't have Nolan, Nolan Carroll. We, we're not gonna, we don't know how Jordan Lewis is going to be. Probably not going to be starting. Mm-hmm. So you move him to the slot, and I think that's I guess what, Ouzier? But that's the next guy in line. And, yeah. that's, and that's the thing is that you so. put that next guy in line, it have to be a Ouzier on, like, nickel defense. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you have Xavier Woods, but he hasn't played enough yet, I, I think. Um, you know, and, and again, I think that you're going to see a lot yeah. of um, – Jordan Lewis not out there, Marquez White or or Duke Thomas. You yeah. might have to go to them too. You know, one of those guys. Yeah. So we, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how that first week one cornerback situation is going to work. Mm-hmm. Our, our our safety is going to be it's going to be By, you know Byron Jones and Heath, and then we're going to have to have Frazier yeah. and you know, hopefully Woods. 
Uh, maybe even another guy out there. We don't know yet. They got Blanton still fighting for his spot and a couple other guys. So it's going to be yeah. interesting to see what happens. Let me see Law so, Nation. So, yeah, Law Nation, I actually want to touch on a comment. Shout out to my Cowboys family also. Giants yeah. O-line looks horrible. I don't see any push down the field with their offense. Yeah, we saw that last. We Giants, discussed it Yeah, I don't earlier, think the Giants yeah. defense will be able to get them out of trouble this year. So exactly that. It just, you know, like I said, you know, yeah. it's only preseason. Blah, preseason. I understand that. I get it. But holy crap, I would be terrified if the Cowboys looked like that yeah, in preseason. They couldn't get a first down. They I couldn't guess the get Browns, the, Eli the young went backwards defense. half the time. I mean, I'm sorry. It was horrible. Their offensive line got shredded. He got sacked like what three yeah. times? At yeah. least twice that I saw. Yep. Yeah. But it, it, it just They didn't look horrible. very, very good. Their Again, run it is preseason, went nowhere. But it, it just it is definitely concerning. And I inside you know, line, defense they, they, can't save you. We saw it with the Baltimore Ravens. We saw it with the Denver Broncos as well. We've seen it with teams. We yeah. saw it with the Vikings, Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. You can have one of the best defenses in the league, but if you don't have an offense that can score even two touchdowns a game, yeah, you you're not going to go anywhere. That's yeah. it. You need a minimum of that if you think that your defense can completely carry you all the way to the end right. of that yeah. fourth quarter. 100%. I so, agree. Yeah, no. That's it. And again, I, I do agree that you know, even though it is preseason, and the Giants defense is going to be solid. We all know this. You know, they're probably the best defense and the most experienced defense in the NFC East. But at the same time, I do think that, you know, they're going to be able to hold it down for a little bit, but not all the time. The Giants, Eli Manning is not, not a, I don't think he's really a top quarterback. I, I guess one no. championship, he, yes. Again, but he, he makes was, too many mistakes. He throws too many interceptions. He's not. He was kind of like a comet. He was a big flash in the sky, very for a bright, couple very C, quick. He had two or three streaks. Well, no, he, he had a couple good streaks, you know, for, he, for the playoffs. I just feel like he's the kind of quarterback who just has little bursts of greatness because I think on a consistent basis, I don't think he's ever been very good, but I think he has moments where he's just hot. And yeah. you know everyone, you know, when you're in it and you're in the zone and you're just – you know, it just that's it. It just it comes on and it's on. And, so and you know, Eli he, happened, and it's happened to Eli, it. Eli got and it. Just never got it. Eli, again. Eli got it. Well, he got it. He got it twice. And again, both times he won Super Bowls. I mean, you got to give him credit for that. And I'm not taking anything away from that. But I am saying that as a overall consistent player, he is not mm -hmm. that. He's not a complete quarterback when it comes to consistency. And that is their big downfall. And again. He loses games to teams that he should never lose against. Yeah, so like Holly Way said, you know, Eli no still looks line. like an average quarterback. Correct. Yes. So, and, and, you and know. yes, Law Nation, they have yet to score a touchdown the Giants this entire preseason, which wow. again, guys. That I didn't know. Yeah, which again, an offensive touchdown. And again, and the thing is this is that, you know, I, I will say that it's just preseason, guys, but definitely you want to see more stuff out of your team, like you were saying. Yeah. You'd be concerned. I'm, I would be concerned. I'm you know, a you little. Just, you want to see at least a little bit, and at least your best guys performing yeah. the way that they should be. And unfortunately, I don't think we even saw Odell or any of the other guys really look all that spectacular. Their defense looked great. Their defense, but we know because their defense right. looks spectacular. And also, most of Brock the time. Eisweiler was the uh, quarterback. Yeah. So in the beginning, that didn't, so, uh, didn't, didn't hurt the uh, Giants' defense. But I mean, Dak's going to be a whole different monster for them to have to try to stop. You know, and whoever the running back is, our exactly. offensive line. That's what we're going to live and die with, guys. And that's what so. we're going to control it. With or without Zeke, we're going to be okay. And I think we're going to be able to beat those Giants the yeah, first so week. So, Lee Ray, thank you so much for joining us. What's up, Lee Eli Ray? is a hit or miss quarterback. Exactly. That so is exactly right. When he's good, he's good. When he's bad, but he's bad. But when he's bad, he's bad. And, and, he, it, cost, and he cost the Giants games. And, yeah. So, you know, I mean, and, and again, his biggest problem is our best thing ever, which is he throws a lot of interceptions. He makes a lot of bad decisions when it comes to where and when to throw the ball. And they're just bad passes. And... <laughs> It makes it easy for the defense to step in and do their jobs. At the same time, I'm never going to complain about a quarterback that gives our defense the ball so nicely. So yeah, no, you know, again, exactly. I it mean, just sorry, we saw it against the Brown. Like, and as soon as I saw it, I'm just like, yeah. Eli, come on, I get it, you know. Yeah. But geez, come and on. Yeah, guys. I agree, with Frankie G. I mean, they were out there for you know for a half. The offensive line, and the Eli was out there for a while. They couldn't even barely get a first exactly. down. Exactly, and you know they were pushing it because they wanted mm -hmm. to push him. You know, Dak was out there. What three? drives who that that two three, two four? drives i think two, two or three exactly yeah, and why because he scored a freaking touchdown on the first drive and then, and proved and then, and then mcfadden fumbled on the second one yeah well, you know on the goal line yeah. no but, no, but i'm just saying that we had a good drive going we would have scored twice in a row you know that would have been it that's all yeah. he wanted to do he did fantastic like look i'm looking at how about them cowboys imagine yeah. if we were in the same scenario last year and roman was healthy and dak impressed could cowboys cut dak for more hell no they could not cut dak if he showed Honestly, last season, I even before Dak did anything, I was like, Dak is better than Moore. You know, Dak, I know Moore had gotten injured, 
So it was already a no, so, no, you know, no contest. So, you know, I think it might have been a possibility I'm, depending on how Dak played, but I still... I, Dak, you would never cut Dak yeah. for more. I mean, you, you, would, you, would, you would cut more over Dak, is what I'm trying to say. Last year, with Romo healthy, in my opinion... I don't, you can trust me on that. I don't like the way Moore was the year before that. <laughs> I agree, but I don't see, you know, again, with all this more love in the Cowboys, you know, staff, yeah, I, yeah. I think they might have made the wrong decision and they might have cut. kept more unnecessarily and cut Dak or, or see if maybe they could squeak him into the practice squad, yeah. you know, or, that, that knows, been, or maybe right. depending, you know, we can't really say because we can't go back in time and see what kind of team depth we had, but maybe they would have kept all three and maybe after a week or two or seeing how Dak continued to play, yeah. maybe they would have made the decision later on, especially if Romo got hurt in the middle of the season or something, because as we know, Romo was prone to injuries. Right. So. That's a good, that's a good, good point there. I mean, that's, that's a good, good way of thinking of it. I never thought of it like that. So I just, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really it just, good. But again, I think it would have been a big shame if the Cowboys had let Dak go because, holy crap, imagine if that would have happened. Yeah, I mean, that would have <laughs> changed the whole history. Completely different the rest of our, right now, yeah, yeah, the rest of our, uh, uh, you know, the rest of our, our, our history and our future, it would have been determined already on a whole different path that that mm-hmm. would have happened. I see the, the Seahawks uh, guy here. Yeah, I hope well, the Cowboys don't win in the playoffs. Well, I hope the Seattle Seahawks step on Legos. <laughs> oh, man, so – let me see here. I was looking at one of the other questions here. Like Eli was great, but he turned into a Brett Favre like quarterback, getting worse <laughs> as you get older. Again, Eli. I think Eli kind of had those streaks before he got older. I think he was just he happened to go on two good streaks in the playoffs, you know, and, and got two Super Bowls, and you know, deservedly so. Good for him. But I just I would have no confidence in him if I was if I was a Giants fan. I mean, just overall, if you look at things in, a, in, a, in an honest, realistic way, I agree. there's some things that he's not yet ever going to reach, I don't think, at this point in his career. No, so. or just if he was going to reach them, he would have reached them already. And think about that. On top of that, they got no offensive line. So, you know, he how much no how hard is that going to be there. for him back there? I mean, they're going to bring – I mean, the only guy will say, look, two guys look – you know, I know Sterling Shepard played, after, you know, back from the injury. Um, and also um, – Evan Ingram, who's their tight end rookie, he looked good out there. He looked like a big receiver, like you know, like yeah. instead of a tight end. So you know, those are there's still some weapons there, but how much time will will he have? Now, our defensive line, will we be able to pressure him? You know, our specific defensive line, will we be able to do as much? I don't know, but I do think that there's a there's a higher chance, especially the fact that we have you know these guys on our team again this season, some new blood in there. I think our defense is, it has a different attitude this year, and I do think that p- players like Ben Mayoa Players like Demarcus Lawrence, who did again, he, he had Mayo, Mayo had a great game last week. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Demarcus Lawrence had, has had two great training camp days in a row here. I mean, he's just doing spin moves and doing some great things right now. So I do, I do like their their tenacity and their aggressiveness. Yeah. So I really like to, to see. I can't wait to see what happens. And again, this is without Irving and, and Demontre Moore. Which are suspended. I don't want to even think about them right now. Exactly. So, and then uh, Sixers JT. It's funny to think Dak is great because Romo's injured. I guess you could say Romo's bad back saved the Cowboys. Uh, it's actually very funny you say that because Dak has been the backup quarterback every team he's ever played on, and every single time due to injury, he's actually had to step up and become the starting quarterback, yeah. and is kind of taken yeah. the team by storm. So yeah. in high school, he was a backup quarterback. The main, you know. You know, the quarterback got injured. He stepped in, obviously took his team very far. Uh, same thing happened when he was at Mississippi. You know, it, it just – and it's funny that now, you know, and he said in an interview very early on in his career that, you know, he's used to having to step up and play in a challenging way and against, you know, like – so much pressure because yeah. he has to step in, you know, a, in a big injury and he has to kind of come take in over, and take over and, take and deal with, you know, the the changes that come with, you know, having your starting quarterback injured. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, the fact that he was able to do that and, you know, kind of, you know, trial by fire, so to speak, I think that that is a big reason why he succeeded, especially on the Cowboys, you know, we have a big spotlight on us as the always Dallas Cowboys, will always so. you know always will be like that for the Cowboys and yeah. you know it's it's it that is true you know it's it's uh, <laughs> to him to handle what he did you know it, it took a history with him which he has with the high school and college and it took experience and, and again and all these things have helped him mature to this point and everything so. everything in his life with his mother and everything has helped him get to this point right now and you know it really made him the man he is today and, and I think he's going to lead the Cowboys he's going to put him on their on his shoulders with or without Zeke. And really help take us to the sixth, seventh, and eighth 
and on. No, that's you right. know, so, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So uh, I do want to touch Patrick, on a couple. Patrick, thanks for joining hey, us. Hey, Patrick, Manuel, what's thanks up? for joining us. Yes, How are you Patrick. Guys doing today? Uh, we talked about that already, but Chad's did get hurt in practice, but it wasn't really an injury. I want to clarify that, guys. It wasn't an injury. Yeah. It was a m cramping. Actually, they gave him IVs. And, you know, he's going to be okay probably. Hopefully so, for tomorrow he'll be back out there. Stay hydrated, Chaz Green. But he's looking to be uh, the, 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 the tackle, the backup tackle, our depth. And he's going to probably be like our swing guy. I see that Patrick has changed his, his, uh, his icon to Dak. Did he? Ooh, yeah, look yay. at that. He left, he, left, he left Odell. Now, Odell today. <laughs> Give me just a quick second. I'll be right yeah. back, guys. Dak today said that he was uh, concerned about his injury, but that he would be okay. That's a pretty much a quote. So, you know, he's going to be all right for, for week one against the Cowboys. I'm sure he'll be ready to play. Uh, will he be 100%? I don't think he will. But um, I do think that, you know, he will be ready to go against the Cowboys, enough to do, be able to do some damage on us. Um, so keep, I hope the Cowboys just don't get overconfident about that. When it comes to uh, Brandon Marshall, similar situation with him, just to touch on that again. His injury, not going to be too bad. It's going to be more of a situation where he's going to just probably take it easy in preseason with OBJ, and they're probably not going to – you know, they're probably not going to see much, if anything, in preseason the rest of the, their last two games. Um, but they'll probably be ready for week one, but not 100%. I, I don't foresee them being 100% with Marshall's shoulder injury, which didn't seem that minor initially, but I guess now they're saying it was. Uh, it's going to be not that big of a deal. And, uh, and Beckham's, you know, Odell's uh, ankle injury, which looked, of course, he made a big deal about it in the, in the TVs on Monday Night Football, that it was like the end of the world. And it just was a slight sprain. So, again, glad they're okay. I hope they play us because I want to get them full throttle. No excuses playing us uh, for Sunday night when we open the season in Big D. Now, um, that was another thing I wanted to uh, touch on about Jalen Smith. And uh, Jerry Jones had mentioned this, that when they um, – first of all, about the national anthem, he said that he's very strongly um, – let me see. He said he's very he's, – he thinks very strongly that the players should stand – during the national anthem. Again, that's his opinion and it's his team. And I don't think he can force them to do anything, but I don't think that, um, you know, I don't think that, you know, obviously he doesn't, he doesn't like that if that was to occur on, on the Cowboys team. I, I'm in for the fan, for the, for the uh, players on this, where I think that, you know, if he, if the players want to, you know, sit for something, it's their right. So it's no, no bylaws or no laws against this in the NFL or, in, you know, legalities that you, you, you can't not, you have to, you know, you want to sit for the, for the national anthem. You're, you're allowed to do that, and uh, I, have, I personally don't have a problem with it, but I can understand when people get upset, but it is their right in the end, and uh, Jerry Jones thinks the opposite, and again, he probably will never bring in someone like Kaepernick, which I disagree with. I think we should bring someone like Kaepernick in. I think he would fit our scheme probably better than our current, uh, all our quarterbacks right now. Uh, I think he'll fit our scheme, our scheme. I don't think he's the best quarterback. I think he'll fit our scheme the best, but Jerry Jones will never bring him in because of the anthem thing. Now, if Des Bryant wants to, wants to sit, that, sit down, uh, or Zeke, or whoever. What if Dak wants to sit? I mean, again, I think that's his right, and that's, that would be their rights, and that's my political part of this. I mean, I do think that it is their right, and whether we agree or not, it's not our, our place. So, um, Let me add my comment to that real quick, uh, since I'm hopping back in there. Yeah, no one's unless really you I know, but yeah. unless, it, unless you're standing up at home, guys, to the national anthem, I don't <laughs> want to hear it. That's it. Simple, done, boom. And again, guys, remember, I'm going to say it again. Since 2009, before that, the players were always in the locker room. They never were outside for the national anthem. They were probably getting hyped up and, and you know, uh, giving some inspiring words. And, and, you know, the coaches were going over some last-minute stuff. There was no, there was no uh, national anthem standing up for that. You know, so, again, guys, that, that, start, that started because the, the military paid the NFL a large sum of money in the, into the millions or billions to incorporate – the patriotic kind of America, and, you know, together is intertwined with football. And, you know, it's going to just pump both things up together. So, Patrick, Chris Jones throws better than Kellen Moore. Who? Chris, oh, Chris Jones, our punter. So, Chris uh, Jones Sixers, is overrated. Chris Jones is, is definitely is, not overrated. Wait, Chris Jones, I think I, he's, he's underrated. Yeah, he's the opposite. Talk I mean, do you have any idea how much a valuable punter, a punter that can get it? It's so precise almost every single time. I mean, super accurate for a punter. Manuel so. Corona. And consistent. Hey, it's awesome, man. Enjoy the game. Can't wait either. So, so later, remember, later, how about them Cowboys? No problem. Thank you so much for joining we'll, us here. We'll be on another 10 minutes or so. So, uh, you know, we hope you guys can stay as long as possible. If you guys haven't liked it yet, please give us a like. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. But, you know, I see a lot of familiar faces, and I'm happy to have you guys on here with us. And if you want to join our Fantasy Football League, 
right down below in our description. You can join it. There's six spots open. I think most of you guys are in there already. It's going to be a fun, uh, you know, that's for fun. It's going to be a fun season in fan fantasy football, I think. Hopefully we get all 20 teams filled. That's right. Um, I did want to say about Jalen Smith, guys. One last thing. Jalen Smith, interesting thing. Um, Jerry Jones said that when, before this training camp started, they actually did some more testing on Jalen Smith's knee and his nerves, which is important now that – his Remember, nerves. the original time frame that we were given at the start of camp, which was in July, was that it was going to be six, six to nine months. Six to nine months, but it, it still could be six to nine months, or now it'd be, I guess it'd be five to eight months, but it was more, or actually less than that, you know, it's like yeah. four to six months right now. But my, my point is, is that right now he would be, 90% uh, of his nerve was already regenerated in that knee uh, at the start of training camp. So he's already a little bit in, farther along in that process. He, obviously, you can see his confidence growing on the field. So guys, you know, it's always just good to hear that kind of like background stuff or that, you know, that, that, that pre-training ca camp information that, you know, they just kind of released now that, you know, he was already at 90%, but they didn't want to really release that until. They until were 100% you know. sure and they could see him out there on the field exactly. and, you know, very performing cautious. the way that they were confident he could. In the, in the off-season training, the, the, the uh, what is that? OTA? The OTAs. Yeah, in the OTAs, they, were, they would have him out there for, you know, they would. For, for running around without pads, and then they'd put him away the next day. We yeah, didn't they see kept him. him hidden. We didn't yeah. really get to see any of him. We were very concerned, thinking that he was much more injured than we thought, that they're just trying to hide it. They're trying to see how long he's going to take to be ready. And a lot of Cowboys staff were also concerned because they didn't get to see what was going on, you know, in that yeah. room behind the scenes. So, obviously, once we got to training camp and we saw him out there, we Same. saw him move around and play so, much better. The Law Nation, yes, I know. I agree. Exactly. Tell him. He, he could be a, a safety, law. I mean, uh, uh, Chris Jones, because he can hit. Yeah. I mean, he can hit. You remember that, that punt? He had a big hit yeah. last year. Yeah, and the punt, yeah, return. <laughs> so, it turned uh, to a big meme. <laughs> I'm going to keep going that. Yes, how about the cows? We will see you so shortly. Um, Sarah Green, what's up? Nice to see you on Hi, here. Hi, Sarah. How you doing Another today? lady. It's on the, on the stream. That's good. Um, Good. We need more of us. <laughs> yeah. Salute. Yes, sir. Um, so, so, I mean, that's, I mean, I kind of went over everything, guys. If you have any other questions or comments you want to leave here, let us know. We're going to hopefully do some kind of, like, Google Hangouts for maybe the – someone brought that up, uh, I think. Oh, yeah, for the draft. For the draft, for the fantasy draft. And we'll do a Google Hangout and maybe have us all on while we do the draft at the same time. We'll see. That's, a, that's an option. Um, um, we might do a video at the same time. Maybe we do a live stream during the draft. Yeah, so guys, just let us, know, yeah, let us know what you guys would rather do. If you'd rather do a Google Hangouts or if you'd rather us just live stream our draft, uh, definitely let us know. And if you haven't already signed up, make sure you do. And if you know anybody who'd like to sign up, yeah, make sure to share our video or our page with them and let oh, them share yes. the link in the description down below so they can join as well. Yeah, man, it would be great to see, you know, as, as it's growing and, and, and we have Cowboy Nation, all these different groups and, and, and YouTubers, we, we, you know, Mark Holmes, yeah. Law Nation, as you can see, he's on here. I mean, uh, you know, Shango, he's awesome. He's playing Madden right now, Madden 18, which we'll get, we're going to get it now, mm -hmm. but what, two nights, probably yeah. 48 hours from now, I'll be playing it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, guys, uh, we appreciate all your guys' comments. Uh, it's great having the back and forth and different ideas getting thrown around, even from mm -hmm. NFC East. Rivals yeah. like Eagle fans and so, Giant fans. And Patrick, I think that's really cool. Too bad you should have gotten an autograph or something. Or yeah. I hope you got at least a few pictures. Yeah, I mean that's cool. You, I'm, I'm guessing you were there at the, uh, at the training camp or something today, right? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. But when did you see Xavier Woods up so. close? Was it during his college days, or was it more like uh, when he was at the Cowboys here? Mm -hmm. So, Steve, we did talk about that a little earlier. I mean, again. We definitely don't think there's anything wrong with what he did, but at the same time, we do agree that he, especially now because he does have more eyes on him, everyone's looking at him, he's definitely under, you know, the spotlight, even more so than before. He needs to be extra careful, especially in the days leading up to the appeal. So anything that might be construed as looking even a little bad, even if he's just hanging out, chilling on a boat with some ladies and yeah. some dudes, it still could look bad, and I think he needs to be more aware of Law that, Nation so. said it on his video that, you know, what about if one of these women come back and say, oh, he did something to me? Exactly. You know? So, you know, he has no now. way to protect himself from any accusations, and the NFL is in law enforcement. They don't need concrete proof as evidenced by yeah. the complete denial of yeah. actual concrete proof, right. you know, right there. in this right. case already. So any kind of anything he could be putting himself in a big dangerous spot yeah. where he could be either banned from the league or just facing an even larger suspension yeah, i mean so, this is his career well again he won't get a larger larger suspension for this but he would definitely just you have the bullseye on you just just chill out at home 
in your backyard for yeah, a couple just, more weeks. And someone else said it, go stay home in a row, read a book. <laughs> yes. Just like, chill just, out. Have a little barbecue or something. You know, just chill easy, out. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, Tyron Smith, uh, Patrick Pache Pacheco says, Tyron Smith got beat a couple times with Demarcus Lawrence. I'm not sure it was. I know that Demarcus Lawrence beat Chaz Green a couple times today pretty badly. I, did, I do think he also beat Tyron Smith once, at least, maybe twice. DeMarcus Lawrence has a nice little spin move working for him, so watch for him on this next couple next couple of preseason games, or this last one, actually. He probably won't play the last the last preseason game, but uh, look for him to be coming on this season as well. But let's hope he can get back to to being healthy 100% and, and, and being quick like the way he's showing right now in, in training camp. Um, jerseys, I mean, listen, right now we just we got Dak, we got yeah, guys, Zeke. Just, we have Navy We're ready. <laughs> Yeah, we try to we try to throw them all yeah, around. Yeah, guys. Change so it up I, obviously, you, guys, you know, we, we try to show you guys all our Cowboys hey, gear. Law, but yeah, no, Law Nation. Yes, thank you so much. But you know, it's a slow climb. But you know, whatever. Yeah. It, it comes as as it, as it, as, it, as it comes. You know, whatever. Yeah, we just so. put our daily videos and and giving the Cowboy content information and what we think or yeah. know our opinions and so. discussing things with the fans out there. But hey, if you guys out there are great, amazing fans, every single one of you guys watching, if you guys like us and you want the world to know or just your friends or maybe even the haters, uh, feel free to share <laughs> uh, the link to some of our live streams to some yeah. of your friends and just get their opinions because honestly, we want to hear from everybody. So, you know. Just yeah. let us know, spread the love, and For let sure. your friends know that we're here. <laughs> hey, congrats. How about them, Cowboys? Good job. That's awesome. Um, let me see. Thank you, Ski, so, Steve. Yep. I mean, exactly what she said. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yep. I mean, so, and then Steve, uh, has Green always heard, don't think he's a Cowboy for very long. But we were saying earlier, you know, it, yeah. it's hard to have a player like Green injured. who has more talent than some of the other guys we have playing, but because he's so consistently injured, he's never out there long enough to show us what he's got. So at the end of the day, it's turning into the point where having him is almost hurting us a little more. Yeah. You know, but our choices out there don't look much better. So right now, let's just hope that Chaz Green continues to stay healthy. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, that's something that, that Chaz Green right now is playing. He's put himself in his own situation where now he's playing for the backup tackle position behind Tyron Smith. Because he is so injury prone, we cannot count on him to play left guard. And Jonathan, also because Jonathan Cooper has shown some good skills this past game and in training camp the last couple of weeks, he's definitely come up and met the, met the challenge. While Byron Bell has kind of fallen back a little bit. So, you know, I, I do think that uh, in time, I think Jonathan Cooper is going to solidify that guard spot. He looked good this last game. Chaz, Chaz Green is going to be a, a backup tackle. He might even start the season, you know, who knows, an injured reserve, an injured, an injury list yeah. because of his injury issues. But again, if he's in, he's, gonna be the, he's not going to be a starter, even though he might be better than Jonathan Cooper because we cannot rely on him. So keep that in mind, guys. And, yeah, so. you know, uh, we, I've, had this, I've asked this question to a lot of different people. Um, if you had to keep two of these spots, what would you do? Would you keep a third quarterback? Would you keep a fourth tight end? Would you keep a sixth receiver? Or would you keep a fourth, and that not, not including Zeke, a fourth running back? So, I mean, I, I do think, and again, if you, I guess you've got to include Zeke in that. So let's include Zeke in that, too. What would you keep? Yeah, he's I, not going to be suspended forever. Right. I mean, exactly. So I'm just saying, when he comes back, what are you going to do? So I would say you trade Morris, mm -hmm. and you keep Rod Smith, you keep Zeke, of course, you keep McFadden. And, you know, and that's your best bet with, with, uh, with also um, mm -hmm. number 41, Keith Smith, as our yeah. fullback. So you got that set. I mean, with, I think you can cut someone like Kellen Moore, and I know they probably won't, but that's what I'm thinking. Kellen Moore would be cut. You know, you have Cooper Rush. Um, I think you'd keep this, the fourth tight end. We need those two. We need I, Hannah. I, we need Swain. I, you know, before I was definitely saying that, you know, forget the fourth tight end. I think we could live without Hannah, that I think Noah Brown might be the better Fit, even though we have a lot of depth at receivers, I mean we have six great, amazing receivers. And that's already. the thing. That's the thing. Do we you know, do we, do we have too many guys already? So we, you know. You know the thing is that I think that as far as our needs go, and especially considering the rest of our offensive line, I think that having four tight ends, especially three of the four that can block better. I mean, Rico is going to yeah, be our primary. Yeah, Rico's um, the one who's still developing and blocking. Yeah, he's developing his block. He's going to be a receiving tight end like Witten is used more often. But again, Witten can block as well. He's, he's an mm -hmm. awesome all-around tight end. And and Hannah and Swaim are more receiving tight I mean, more blocking tight ends. Definitely Hannah much more. But if one of those guys, two guys could develop into a more of a passing guy, a more all-around guy, do we keep just, do we cut that, that, four, that, that Swaim or yeah. we cut the Hannah guy off? So we can squeeze in Noah Brown and not lose him to to the uh, waivers because that's what's gonna he's, we're gonna lose him for agency. Yeah. Someone's gonna pick up Noah Brown. I'm so, almost sure of that. I think my fear is that the problem with both of them, Swain and Hannah, is that they both are somewhat injury prone. Hannah more so. So they they kind of 
you know, I think that it comes down to we kind of have to keep both in case one of them goes out. That's true. So, but we also, you know, we also I, I use a lot of keep that into consideration. we use a lot of two tight end sets or three tight end sets, I should say. Mm-hmm. So we have Witt on the line, yeah, and we so, have them two playing right behind them, like off the line. I mean, they, we we power one side, we power the other. Now we could use a fullback. We could use like another another man. offensive line. Yeah, we could use another offensive lineman. You know, to play sure. those positions. But again, I, I think the Cowboys want to use those the Hannah and Swain because they seem to fit the the, the role. The properly. Cowboys yeah, scheme, exactly. the way that we like to play, the way that we like to run our offense. You know, Jeff and Swain are two very important and vital puzzle pieces. Honestly, the yeah. way that we do it. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, no, yeah, oh yeah, ah, Jeff and Swain. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Swain and Hannah. <laughs> yes, but uh, yes, yeah, so, so I'm looking at the other things here about Chaz Green penalties. We'll see. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's going to get us a lot of penalties, but I know I don't. I'm not too confident in, in him yet, especially because of his injuries. But he does have some yeah. mistakes. He does make some mental, mental mistakes. I do think he's going to Zeke is going to get his uh, the Steve Scoggins. Mm-hmm. Uh, do we think Zeke will get a suspension? Yes, I think his suspension will be lowered. I, I, I do still think that he's going to face some type of suspension. Yeah. I want to say two games because I do think I believe he'll I guess deserves, I'm being a little worst, bit optimistic. But as <laughs> worse, I think he deserves by what's evidence provided. Two games should be the least he gets for for the St. Patrick's Day thing. Yeah, Boot we game. agree. We agree on that exactly. But when it comes to what I think the NFL is going to give him, I think they're going to give him four, and it'll probably reduce it to four. And I think he's going to still put the injunction in there. So, and, and you know, we'll have to see what happens if it, if that injunction goes through. You'll see him the whole season, maybe. Exactly. So, so we'll he see. might not even face any kind of suspension until next year, but you know, little by little. So yeah, uh, I mean, let's see. Uh, Chad Green all the we, way gets his penalty too much. He yeah, thinks Zeke will get his suspension lowered. Now yet. trading Morris, Patrick Pacheco saying trade Morris to who? There's a lot of teams I would love to have Morris in the depth chart or as a starter. He can play. He can still start for some teams, guys. Yeah, maybe, so, maybe the Redskins might want him back. I don't know. But the again, point is, the thing is that it, it just when we have a guy like Zeke, when we have guys like McFadden, Morris just becomes less valuable to us as Cowboys doesn't mean that he can't fit another team and be a shining star yeah, over there. Exactly. He still has a lot of power exactly. and a lot of talent. Yeah, he's got he's got the ability. I, I don't, no diss to him. It's just that he hasn't shown enough to compare it and we'll, for what we need in our schemes, in our defense, in our offensive scheme that to, to really be – he's more repetitive in a way when it comes to Zeke, mm-hmm. McFadden, and Rod Smith. You know, you got so much more there. And plus, Rod Smith plays special teams. Yeah. He does other things as well. So uh, Rod Smith is very right, versatile in right. a way that Alfred Morris isn't. And M- right McFadden now, is, what we need – on our team, it just right. fits and our team. And the Fadden returns kickoffs. You know, I mean, these are things that make that, a difference. Yeah. You know, those little things make a difference at the end of the day. Last year, it was a different team. This year, it does. Yeah. So now, I like I like that. Um, yeah. That Steve, thanks, Steve, thanks for joining our yes, league. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, we have we have five spots open, guys or less. I don't know, but join up if you like. Yeah. So uh, our fantasy football twenty team league. We're up to fifteen teams at least, maybe sixteen. I don't know. I'm losing track. There's a lot of people in there. There's only about four or five spots open. Um, uh, Steve Scoggins says Hannah needs to go so we can keep Brown, and that's the thing. If Hannah goes, we keep Brown, but if we keep more, it's like a whole puzzle piece, you know, yeah, guys. At the end, so. we'll definitely be having a video on that on itself, or at least a live stream focused only on on that. More yeah, video in the last sort of week yeah. leading up to Week One. Yeah, for sure. So get ready for that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Steve Scoggins also says, "I hope he gets two games. He might grow up." I mean, look, you know, I, in, I, in, I, in I never way, want. I know. I don't want to see Zeke suspended, but I hope throughout this whole scenario he learned his lesson. Yeah, but it, it just with the pictures on this lake thing, you wonder yeah. sometimes. You still so, wonder, look, even though he could do what he wants. He's yeah. 22. He, I hate to say that he's young excuse because at the end of the day, he's a grown man who needs to make grown man decisions. Yeah, even though he's a but kid. At the same, still, you know, it just look. The thing is, live your smarter. life, be single, have fun, do whatever you want, but you have to be responsible. And also, you have to look at the circumstance. Now, in a typical week of football, you have a day off, you go on a lake, and you're having a beer with some friends and some women. Okay, I mean, even that's a risk for Zeke with all the experiences that he's had so far up yeah. until you know in his NFL career and his college, in the end of his college career, but. Okay, you know, but when you have the NFL looking at every move you make, you do not do that. Exactly. You're almost like pushing so it in their face. You have to be aware. You got to be smart. You got to know the so. circumstances. You got to kind of, yeah, sometimes you have to actually go back a little bit and say, let me chill out for a little bit because they are watching me. Exactly. You got to so, be smarter. Law Nation, thank you so much for yes, watching us Law today. Law Nation, guys, if you haven't gotten to him, the good work go to, to subscribe to his channel. He has some great content. He puts a lot of uh, breakdowns on, on players and positions. It's awesome. You guys, a lot of yeah. you guys probably came over. From his side to here, so we appreciate it. Yeah, but definitely check out his channel if yeah. you haven't already. Yeah, it's so, awesome. Shallow Hal, I know you keep saying everyone is playing for second place because you're going to win, <laughs> but... 
put your money where your mouth is, and we'll see you on draft day. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, that's going to be an interesting so, draft for 20 teams. I just, I'm trying to think, 20 players in the first round. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen a, it's crazy. 16 We have a 16-team league, league for, and, for and money just, and all that. Yeah. <laughs> crazy intense. Even that, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, by the end, you're just picking guys you've never even heard of. No, they, so. She hasn't heard of. <laughs> well, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, this is interesting. You guys are going to go deep in this draft, so, so this will be interesting. Um, but again, guys, you know, first and foremost, it's about Dallas Cowboys. Yes. Um, so, and Steve Scoggins, I appreciate it. Thank you. So thank you, Steve. We do our best on keeping we up on We enjoy hearing from you guys. I mean, yeah. again, you know, this is a conversation. You know, we're giving you guys our thoughts on the Cowboys, and you guys give us yours. And, you know, we try to get it back and yeah, forth. We, so, you and know, we, we also try to give you the updates and stuff from, from today, you know, all the stuff. And, you know, we have it jotted down, and, you know, we kind of went through it all again. So if you guys miss any of this, just yeah, make sure to watch back on our live stream. We did yeah. cover absolutely everything related to the Cowboys news today. So uh, if you missed anything, uh, we covered the OBJ injury, Brandon Marshall. Uh, yeah. We covered, like we said, everything and anything Dallas Cowboys, including our injured players, uh, who is possibly going to be playing again this week, how our offense did, defense, and just everything yeah, and everything Cowboys. Sure. And I go, Patrick, Giants overrated. You were just, you loved the Giants before OBJ got hurt. What's up with that? And uh, Steve Scoggins, yeah, I mean, hey man, appreciate it, man. I'm, hey, happy late birthday! Yeah. Sixty years young. Yeah, so. I, I, your your love for the Cowboys is showing through. I mean, if you watch the uh, our little video, you can see, you know, our love for the Cowboys, how I how I kind of, you know, <laughs> it kind of blossomed. Spawned to, this whole channel be yeah. existing. But so. again, you know, I've been a Cowboy fan in, in New Jersey, you know, with giant giant territory. territory, my my you know my childhood, and and, and then and moved down south after that. But I was a Cowboy fan. From, the, from 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 five four years old when I first saw the uniforms when I first saw the, the cheerleaders and you know <laughs> whatever you know Ooh. no you know I, I I've been a Cowboy fan my entire life yeah guys no 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 he's completely lying the only reason he's a Cowboy <laughs> fan is because of the cheerleaders yeah. <laughs> and I do I, I will say also guys that you know I've been through the three and thirteen year with Tom Landry the one and fifteen year with Jimmy Johnson I've been through all that stuff I'm no bandwagon here just so you guys know I know my stuff going back to the Danny White and Tony Dorsett days so. My, my memory might not be as, as good, but, I, you know, I do remember them. And I remember all those games, those memorable games in the 80s and 90s and Super Bowls and, and on. And then yeah, the depressing so. 21 and years And Dano, later. thanks so much. Uh, every <laughs> single one of you guys who's out there watching, yes. thank you so much for watching us, guys. Um, definitely make sure to I do miss Romo, too, guys. On. I do miss Romo. Yeah, I just honestly, I feel really bad for Romo because he had – he definitely is one of the greats. Yeah. But I feel like he was, it was like – Close, but no cigar. He'll make, he'll make the Cowboys him. ring of honor. He should make the Hall of Fame. Not Maybe not first ballot, but he'll make for a Hall of Fame. And I had no discussion here. We were talking about Jason Witten the other day. He'll be a Hall of Fame first ballot. Jason Absolutely. Yeah. It, I mean, I would be embarrassed uh, for yeah, no, you yeah, know, whoever picks the Hall of Famers yeah, yeah, if no, they, he doesn't make it in the first Guys, ballot, I think so. we're going to wrap it up. We do appreciate everything. Again, guys, yeah. watch. Yeah. <laughs> watch. <laughs> yes, this is my cheerleader. This is all I need oh. right here. So. So, guys, thanks yeah. again for watching. We appreciate it. Um, yes, thank you, every single one of you guys, for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't the, already. Spread, spread the, the word. word. Yeah. Share this with your friends, guys, if you want to hear. You know, it just again, we want to hear everybody's thoughts, everyone's opinions. We want everybody to be part of our family. Yeah. So and join us, of course, for the you know game day live streams. We're gonna have that. You know, every, yeah, every so single this week. This Saturday, right? This Saturday mm -hmm. at I think 8 p.m. Eastern time. So yeah. get ready for that. It's gonna be Oakland Raiders at the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. And Cowboys, my Cowboys family, right here. Right here, guys. So, you know, you can watch that and uh, join the Fantasy Football League. I think you mentioned that. Yep. Like, subscribe. So. And thank you guys for, for everything, guys. Good night. Mm -hmm. And, of course, as always and forever, go, go Cowboys! Cowboys! Woohoo! Thank you, guys. We'll catch you next time. Peace out. Go Cowboys. <laughs>